Oh. Almost 10. That was nine in like a half. So. Yeah, no, I, I think I actually am, which is good. All right, what are we doing now? Um, do some straight leg uh, calf uh, extensions. Hit that gag strock again. Um, we hit the uh, line leg curls first this time because this was taken. Not a big deal to mix them up in that in this case because you know these are pretty disparate uh, muscle groups, hamstrings and calves. You can, you can really warm them up in any order. It doesn't really matter too much. They're pretty isolated and they don't have too much interaction. So. You know, you can mix that up, but I usually prefer to hit calves first because, like I said a couple episodes ago, I, you know, declared a jihad on my calves, and so they're, you know, I got to hit them the hardest, so. Anyway, uh, let's get it. Wait, what, why don't you tell everyone why you're wearing a hat? Why I'm wearing a hat? Yeah. Well, when you get older, and you... It's not the reason. It's because he gets hit on every five seconds, so he has to cover his face as much as he can. <laughs> <laughs> If I don't... Oh, oh God, they're coming. They're relax. Coming. <laughs> relax. Relax. All right, let's get it. All right, let's go. You know, last week I hit the upper end of the rep range, I got 10. So we raised the weight today, but I still got like nine. I'm feeling pretty strong, so stuff, let's go. So, I gotta call at 6.30 actually, cause I haven't done any legitimate like advertising campaigns for Sauce Bay in three years now. And as you know, I just did that equity crowdfunding campaign, so we raised some money, and we had like a, ma a major production. We hired this ad agency that they're also in-house media production company. And today we're actually going over all the, the edits. So we hired like actual actors, like they auditioned for the role. So we have some really funny stuff going. And uh, yeah, I'm excited, because I, I want to get this done, because once we get all these edits done, and the, the, the editors send it back to us, and we finally get the final approval, we can finally move forward and we got some really like risque ads. So <laughs> we're gonna see what happens. Wait, more more real than this actor right here? Let's <laughs> You're an idiot. No, it's all you, it's all you, yeah. Um, so yeah, that's cool. But yeah, so once these ads go live, uh, it's gonna be like a game changer because this is like legit. Um, you know, it's been months in the making. So this is gonna be a big deal because now that we're in over a thousand stores, one of the biggest things is I need to build brand awareness. So uh, I'm really excited to get this going. I haven't done anything like this ever. Like the, ad, the advertising campaign I ran in 2020 was more of like a compilation of, you know, like, hey, trying it on food or in the Hot Ones videos. But this is like its own thing and I'm really excited to see how it pans out. 
I'm also working on the, uh, the hot honey. So I'm launching a hot raw honey. And people don't believe me when I say this, but I actually self-taught myself all the design works. So, like I designed the logo, I handle all the content, etc. So I've been creating this hot honey label, but I'm a perfectionist for better or worse. And uh, it's been taking me a little bit of time, but I'm almost done. So I'm excited. He's also growing these bags. Trying to. Ugh. So stiff legged -like deadlifts, you get a lot of times people like they go way down here, back is kind of like bent forward and everything. They get super deep, but what's that depth doing if the hamstrings aren't getting stretched? So what you want to do is keep your hips back, your butt out, your belly pumped out, chest up the whole time. And if you do that, you already feel these are pre-stretched. The hamstrings are pre-stretched. And then from there, you only go as deep as you can before you sacrifice form, and then you come back up. People go here, and then they like go extra deep as if that's like you know doing more to, strip, to lengthen the, the hamstrings, but it's really, it's not. You're just bending your, your, your upper back. So, but if you're trying to make this a hamstring isolated movement, There to there. Fun fact, Mike just told me, I was joking about legally changing my name to Winnie the Pooh, because I love honey. I really do, I eat fucking honey every day, raw honey. And uh, apparently, Winnie the Pooh is public domain now. So you might see a Winnie the Pooh ad, or I honestly might legally change my name to Winnie the Pooh. I don't know. You think that'll work? Like what's it like? As long as I get to be Eeyore. No, but seriously, like, imagine me going into a meeting, yeah. and like, what's your name? I'm like, I'm Winnie. You remind me of, like, Willy Wonka, but for funny. Mr. The Pooh? Yeah, Mr. The Pooh. <laughs> you have your own factory where you trap kids in, like, murder. Yeah. Hey, in the name of dude, I'm, oh, I'm out of honey. Many an empty jar out there. Uh, I feel it. Need more. Mm -hmm. It's so good though.
I do feel it a lot more, like pointing outwards yeah. with what you said. Because yeah, yeah. I was doing it, but not as much, and I was able to do like five plates. Yeah. And by making that change, yeah. I can't do. Yeah, like I could do a little more, but there's no way I could do what I was doing. So. All right, so Kevin had to go. Kevin had to take off. He had to do some stuff for Sauce Bay. Um, and I'm doing hip thrusts. So if you guys follow along or if you guys do my programs, I don't typically include hip thrusts with the, a lot of the new compounding you know, evidence. Um, you know, hip thrusts are actually not the best glute builder. They're good, but things like lunges are a lot better. But since I've already done lunges, you know, the reason I'm doing these now is because I loaded up some belt squats and, uh, and I felt a bit of a sharp pain in my groin. And um, so once in a while this happens to me over the years. This just seems to happen when I do a lot of squats and um, the belt was actually kind of cutting into the pain actually because it, you know, it pulls down on that area. So like I was saying, doing more, um, doing some hip thrusts. And the reason why hip thrusts are not as good as things like the lunge is because the lunge provides a better uh, lengthened state for the glutes than the hip thrust does. The, hips, the hip thrust doesn't really give very much of a stretch at all for your glutes. It's really all about the contraction and kind of, you know, getting as, as good of a contraction as you possibly can. And so it's, it makes it a bit less, uh, a bit less of a optimal uh, glute builder, but it's a great glute builder nonetheless. So don't get me wrong, but in this case, it allows me to really isolate my glutes and not risk any, risk any injury in my groin area. So. That's what I'm doing. Um, so, yeah, we'll see. All right, finishing things off with some abductors. <sighs> Second working set. I think I got nine last time, 200 pounds. Let's see what I can get this time.
around the time of COVID, you know, a lot of people, you know, might happen to me too, is a lot of gyms closed down and people really, you know, the whole country really looked towards the internet for, uh, you know, for community, for information, for a sense of camaraderie. And, you know, coming from the background of somebody who was both like a jock and a gamer, you know, I, I actually had some experience with using, you know, technology like Discord, um, which is like a, a, you know, a software for gamers to sort of connect and, and to talk to one another and to build communities and, and to create things together. And so I decided I was going to use this for a, diff a different purpose. I was going to use this for people who wanted to stay in shape um, during COVID and COVID lockdowns. And so it began with, you know, just filming my workouts in my garage and, you know, uh, using, I had, I bought a squat rack for my garage and just using a, a couple of barbells and the squat rack, you know, giving people, you know, workouts to, you know, to do at from, from home. And with all the extra time, you know, on our hands, you know, I had work, but then I also had a bunch of downtime. And what would I do? I would work out and then I would try to, you know, help other people, you know, get in shape. And people really took to this. People really, you know, appreciated the, you know, the guidance, but also the sense that like, you know, I could do it too. You know, a lot of these people, like, you know, they see sort of pictures of people working out or, or you know, somebody who's in really great shape and they think it's this thing that's unattainable, but suddenly you're interacting with somebody every day and you get to know them on a personal level and suddenly it doesn't seem so, you know, out of reach, you know, so... So, so it built from there and, um, you know, we've been doing it, you know, long after lockdowns ended, long after people were, you know, back living their normal lives, going to the gym. But as people did go back to the gyms and as people did get back into their normal routines, you know, my, my skill, my understanding of fitness had, had actually evolved as well. And, and I had, you know, been basically living this, you know, uh, you know, writing programs all the time for people and a answering questions and doing my own research and figuring things out for myself, you know, it became sort of like this time where I was, it, it, suddenly it was like a, an incubator for, to, to learn. And so I just had absorbed so much information and I've, I've had helped so many people up until that point that, you know, um, making these programs, you know, weekly for weeks, every, every week for, uh, for years, I mean, this was just sort of part of my life and it still is to this day and people have really seemed to have gotten a lot out of it whether it just be the fact that you know they're in a community that of like-minded people or whether or not they they get a lot from the programs themselves whether or not they just feel inspired just by you know what we've accomplished so far or want to be a part of something that's growing and bigger than them you know this has sort of been the trajectory of gain trust ever since and so, you know, we're moving now into doing these vlogs and really it's just a way of, of actually, you know, normalizing for more people out there. Like, oh, like this, this guy goes to the gym, he just kind of goofs off and has fun and, and, you know, gets really great results and, and has some good insights and stuff like that. I mean, it's more accessible now than ever. I mean, there are so many different people, you know, like Sam Sulik, for example, like a super, you know, approachable guy who people really love to, you know, who people really connect with. And I think now more than ever, utilizing these like tools that we have, like using, you know, the Discord server for, you know, to build fitness communities, I think it's just sort of the future of fitness uh, for the foreseeable future, at least. And um, utilizing it in the way that we have, you know, we've built up like a huge library of like exercise demos, like how to demos, where we put like, you know, countless hours into each one of these. And, you know, in the time that we've been doing this for years and years and years, the, you know, we've gotten better at this. Like, and I say we, I mean, you know, there's, you know, a team of people now who are responsible for building and keeping Gain Trust going. And so, you know, we've, we've gotten and improved in with our video editing te uh, technology, you know, our skill set, I mean, our video ed editing skill set, my video editing skill set, the filming, um, the, the actual programs themselves. Uh, we have our own, you know, technology, our own bot technology inside of the Gain Trust server that helps people, that lets people log their workouts and log their cardio sessions, post their uh, PRs, and to, um, 
you know, post before and after pictures and, you know, calculate their macros and stuff like that. It's all inbuilt, home built tech for, uh, for Discord. And, you know, we have a lot of things coming in the future too. So it's just an exciting thing to be a part of. And um, it just seems to be growing and people seem to find this to be an, a really perfect medium for, to connect with like fitness influencers, if you want to call them that. Um, you know, it's, it's just a really great way for people to, to, you know, take that personal step, you know, take, uh, just get one more step closer to these people that, you know, they might see on their screens. It's like, I can actually interact with that person. I can actually, you know, ask that person questions and stuff like that and maybe get that question answered instead of just tweeting at them and hoping, you know, that's really great too. But, you know, if you join their discord server, I mean, you're, you know, that's a whole nother level of closeness. So, um, you know, with that being said, um, yeah, I hope that you guys definitely come by the Discord server, join in. You don't have to sign up as a member or anything. Just join in and, and hang out and, and, and join the fun. And, uh, and yeah, and, uh, and also make sure to check out our, the first episode of the, uh, the In Gains We Trust podcast I did with uh, Bowtie Docs. Um, that, that came out uh, today, actually, or it'll be yesterday when you see this. So it came out yesterday, and that was a lot of fun. And we're going to have a lot, we're going to be doing a lot more of those in the future. And uh, we'll see how that goes because that was uh, that was pretty cool. So, yeah, lots to look forward to. And uh, thanks for uh, thanks for watching.